spray droplet size. This is incredibly important if you want good spray coverage on the one side with a smaller droplet, yet you want to reduce drift, so you probably want a larger droplet. How do you decide what to do? Well, one of the challenges gets to be if you've got multiple products in the tank, then sometimes you say, well, I want to spray a fungicide, but I also want to spray Roundup, and I don't want the Roundup to drift, but the fungicide needs to be a small particle. Hey, there may be cases where that tank mix just doesn't make sense, and you may have to make two applications in order to get the most out of each one, and you say, what? I don't have time for that. Really? You don't have time? You think about how fast you can spray 100 acres. It may only take an hour, depending on your equipment, or maybe a couple of hours and uh, to run back over that field, spend a couple of hours to actually make things really work, that takes a lot less time than a respray situation. Well, yeah, but Darren, you might be held up for a few days because let's say you do the herbicide first, you can't go spray a fungicide right away. You can't just go follow and repeat two hours later and throw the fungicide on, that's not gonna work. So this gets to be the real challenge. And in a lot of cases, I'm gonna tell guys, I just throw the things together. But I'd look at what are you really trying to accomplish, number one. So if there's a very high priority, number one, and that's a small spray droplet, and a pretty low priority, number two, that's a big spray droplet, well, then I gotta think a little bit. And I gotta say, okay, I need the small spray droplet, but small spray droplets mean I'm going to have more drift. So. If I'm gonna have small spray droplets, what does that mean for wind speed? Now all of a sudden, instead of going in a 10 mile an hour wind, maybe I wanna go in a two mile an hour wind. The other thing, maybe you just slow down your sprayer. Now this is one of those spots where, okay, I'll change a tip or I'll change this or that, but I'm still gonna run 12 miles an hour. Not if you wanna do the best job out there. You may have to slow down and run a little bit slower when you're going across the field. And, and when you think about, oh man, it's gonna add a lot of time to my job. It is gonna add some, but you think about it, refilling a lot of times takes up a good chunk of your time. And it's not necessarily I'm gonna to have to refill more, it's just oh, I'm gonna drive a little bit slower. Maybe instead of 12 miles an hour, I find that at eight miles an hour, I can do a really good job and I'm getting the droplets to land where I need them. Well, the other thing that I look at is switching your spray nozzles as you get inside the field. So borders around the field, I might just sacrifice a little bit of coverage, sacrifice a little bit of weed and disease control and say, you know what, I got a neighbor right over here. I'm gonna be extra safe, switch spray nozzles, go with a larger droplet, it's gonna hit the ground. But once I get out in the field and I'm 180 or 120 feet out in the field, you know what, now I'm a lot safer, now I can switch nozzles. Okay, my last point is just talk to your neighbors. Find out what they've got across the fence. If you've got some conflicts there of, oh, he's got this trait, I've got a different trait, we're gonna be spraying different herbicides. Hey, that's great to know up front. That way your neighbor knows what's going on and so do you. And if you see, oh boy, maybe there is just a hair uh, of drift coming right into my fence rows. Uh, and you know, oh, we've got the same things, we're spraying the same things, no big deal. Or, you know, hey, I, I really need to shut the sprayer off because I know my neighbor has a sensitive crop. And the last point I've got is you've got to know what your product is. If you're using something that has volatility, like Dicamba or 2,4-D, or something where you're you know, pretty concerned about drift, like let's say it's an HPPD or especially Roundup, you know what, in those cases, I'm gonna try to have a little bit bigger spray droplet. If I'm after coverage, I have something like Gramoxone, Liberty, a fungicide, and I need great spray coverage, that's where I want the smaller spray droplet. So if I can, I wanna use a different nozzle. Well, which droplet size would you need to control our Weed of the Week? We'll show you which products and droplet size might work best coming up next.